I'm gonna work on the bottoms of the feet and the back of the lower leg. I'm starting with a little bit of mobilizing just with the soft fists walking back and forth. I'm feeling the tarsals and metatarsals slide and move around, making Missy uh, comfortable and familiar with my touch before we apply any shea butter. I tend to use organic, raw, unrefined shea butter. The shea butter I have today has a little bit of a yellow hue to it. I'm gonna grab a little bit and apply it to my hands. It absorbs extremely well. It's very deeply hydrating and great to use on feet, particularly if you live in a climate where there's a lot of sandal use. Rubbing it around the heel, you might be able to see that little bit of a yellow sheen. I'm gonna smooth it out across the feet. If you find that you've got too much, if there's too much slick on the feet, you're just gonna slide up the leg to spread some of that out. Hooking around the ankles, around the calves. This absorbs extremely well. It's very wonderful with ethnic clients who have dry skin. It absorbs and provides just a perfect sheen. I'm now gonna slide with soft knuckles along the bottoms of the feet. It also keeps my hands soft. No calluses. Working through. If there's ever too much pressure, I want the receiver, in this case Missy, to just verbally let me know. Okay, Missy? I can't see her face, so I let her know that she can tell me verbally if it's too much pressure. Hooking around the heel, sliding up and over curling around. You could do both at the same time. Like I said, great, great for sandaled feet. If you ever find that you work with someone, maybe the feet are a little smelly. What you can do is you can apply a heavy saturation of shea butter. You can use a couple of drops maybe of essential oil on the bottoms of their feet rubbed in and then you can wrap them in warm towels. It's going to make that shea butter absorb into the skin even more rapidly. It's sort of a way of cleaning the feet before you work on someone. I'm just sliding around feeling my way through the feet. On this right foot I'm going to lift and then start using a flat thumb around the base of the foot, feeling my way around. I can use knuckles. What tools do I have? What angle and position can I be in to make this as comfortable as possible? A little gnarly in there, not too much pressure, Missy? Okay, just feel a little tension along the arch there, sliding in, then I'm gonna traction. Out over the toes. If I use a fist, I can always change my position. I can come to seated, standing, circles and rolls. Always making it easy. You can explore your own range of motion as you work on someone.
around the heel, back of the foot. Not putting extreme pressure through here. It's more just softening the skin. Generally, that's an endangerment site. You wouldn't put extreme pressure around the Achilles tendon. You're just softening the skin and tissue there. I'm gonna slide up and over into the calves again. You can hook a thumb right along the inside of the tibia. Big, broad palm pressure, squeezing the calf. Think of a, a tube of toothpaste, squeezing out and up. Tractioning out and repeating. Slowly that shea butter absorbs, gives you a bit more traction. You start off with something that's more akin to say a Swedish stroke. It's got a little more glide and then slowly a little more pressure, more towards what people would consider deep tissue or at least deep pressure right through the base of the feet, little circles. Depending on angle, position, I can hold here. I'm gonna slide up with a forearm. Now, my shoulder is not stacked right above, so this is less pressure. I'm reaching out and over. I'm able to slide through my forearm. Now, can I slide up? One of the things I'm always working with in practice is positioning and leverage. I always feel like I'm dancing with the receiver, trying to figure out a way to deliver pressure in the absolute easiest way possible to get them to release. I hooked around the outside of the foot. You'll see all this movement. I've rotated the leg several different directions. Maybe I hook around the heel, sliding up and over. No ticklish there, Missy? Okay. And hooking around the heel of my hand, guiding, gliding through there. Now, this does use my hands. Long term, you'll develop strong hands as you work, but I'm not trying to overwork them. I use them when appropriate. I was using this as a bolster to slide in that broad forearm. I want a bit more pressure, so I'm gonna come up to the table and I'm gonna see if I can, there we go. Broad pressure with a forearm, gliding out. Now, this is more broad forearm than just the point of my elbow. I could give her the point of my elbow if we built up to that. But for now, just a good slide and glide out and along. We've changed directions several times, directors, directions and angles of pressure. Toes are mobile tarsals move, a little bit of motion this way. I'm gonna use a bolster. I just rolled up a towel. This just provides a little bit more space there. It's gonna give me a little more height so I can come in and slide down and along using the other forearm. Again, if I wanna slide up, I can. Up, over, and down. If I decide to go back into the knuckles there. Changing angle, leverage, and vectors of pressure. Tons of this in my work. What I will always tell you when you work on friends and loved ones is to go slow and get feedback. You can go deeply, you just cannot do so quickly. When you get tissue to unwind, you will be amazed how quickly it feels like you sink down to bone. 
when tissue lets go and the receiver feels relaxed and comfortable. Exploring angles, pressure, and coming down. Let's see if I can hook in. There we go. Now I'm engaging a slide on both sides, down towards the toe and along the forearm. Let's see if I can switch sides and do the same. Sliding along, and I'll switch to the opposite foot. I'm gonna slide that guy out, bolster the other foot, hook that in. Any tools you want, thumbs, sure. What's called for? The difference between using a thumb, using the palm or the heel of hand, depends on what you're trying to access depends on what you're trying to do. What I don't want you to do is just use your thumb for everything. When you use your thumb for everything, it's gonna hurt, get sore. You're not even gonna give a very good massage because you're too busy worried about the fact that you're hurting to actually focus on the receiver and work on them. The receiver does not want you to hurt while you work. They just want adequate pressure. And you can learn long term when you study with me to use all of your body. Because I typically work on a mat, I can work use my knees, feet, legs, sit bones, elbows, forearms, hands. It's like the Brazilian Jiu Jitsu of body work. Mixed martial arts. Right through there. And again, just like before, how's a forearm? Right through there, I can push in, gliding along those surfaces. Seeing how the pressure is. You can quickly change from one tool to the next. Love this little bit of work around the heels. These guys get beat up in shoes and sandals. I love, love slathering people's heels in shea butter, working on this. Down through the feet. If you decide you want more forearm, go for it. Just make sure that you're stacking your body in a way that feels comfortable. Have fun while you work. Explore. Traction across the feet there. I have no doubt that Missy is ready to sign over all of her worldly goods after that work. Feet, such an amazing area of the body. I take the bolster out, both feet are out, back to flat, soft knuckles. Sliding along the plantar surfaces of the foot, out along the toes. You'll see as I press in, the toes curl in. It's mobilizing the feet, the bones of the feet getting in there. A hook over and again up through the calves. I'll do one at a time. Big, broad pressure. There's still enough shea butter on the legs to slide through this. It's good for skin. Uh, ladies, when you go see massage therapists, don't be afraid about having hair on your legs or stubble. Uh, that just exfoliates my hands. Um, I will say this in the most polite and respectful way possible. After 14 years, I have realized that women are mammals, which means they have hair and suckle young. It's totally fine, it doesn't bother me. You just work through that. And I'll 
I'll switch sides, sliding through the other calf. There is a male massage therapist somewhere who definitely needs the business. He does not care if you have stubble on your legs. Trust me. Slide right along. And then both. Same time. Give a little bit more to the right side. That's very normal in my sessions since I feel that people seem to hold more tension on their dominant side, even through their leg. If they're right-handed, they're also right-legged, right dominant. You've slid through that. I'm gonna traction and apparently drag the table along with me. Right through the bottoms of the feet again. If you want to traction both, you can just hook the thumbs around. You can give a bit of a calf stretch there. Mobilizing the bottoms of the feet, stretching and lengthening the calves, just using the mobility that this position allows to come in and work. And if I come up, some people have issue making uh, physical contact with the receiver. I do not. I have folded myself into what looks like half pigeon. This gives me a nice bolster with my own body to then sink down and through. Again, changing vector angle and pressure. Now I got a light uh, from the other end of the table because it was too much, right? Just a little bit. Yeah. It's just the angle. It was right up here in the arch because I can slide through. Is that better? Yeah. There we go. Big and broad. Now again, what we we're avoiding is point, point, point. That guy's really sharp. I'm not saying you can't use it. You just have to go slow. This is more big, broad forearm. You can see this movement of the leg movement of the foot you can shift your body in a way that works well if you don't like this just use a heavier bolster roll up two towels i like this passive body contact what i can tell you from experience is the receivers want more physical contact half of what you do giving a massage is providing touch this provides a passive touch in addition to this active work that we're doing. More body contact is a key part of the work that I do. I'm gonna slide up again. She said this was a little more tender, but I'm being more broad. Feel better? There we go. Up and over, out again. Now, double-handed heel. I can interlace the fingers. Hey. Right up and through. Now, through the calves. Double. Handed glide, not too much big and broad. That's more to the posterior. You can see this pressure here, more posterior. And then I'm kind of around the sides, tube of toothpaste, right? Squeezing that guy. You can go to a single. You can also slide with the forearm. Big and broad here. I backed off just a hair, just to glide through. As I back out, contraction, I can move my body in any way that feels comfortable. I like changing position, not only for myself, but also to give new vectors and angles of pressure to be able to work on.
notice if you use one hand more than the other. You're going to do your best to try to be balanced from left to right. Develop a bit of ambidexterity. Using the massage session to develop a sort of body awareness as you work on the receiver. So many opportunities to increase intimacy, increase our potential for communication and care. I dream of the day I can get a team of massage therapists to go down to the nursing home and work on the residents. People who need touch, people whose partners have passed. Just as needy as the rest of the population, but a specific needs population that needs touch and body work. Working through the feet, trying to make sure that my tip today is hefty. Opening up the feet. Ah, and Missy gives me a big laugh because that is a massage therapist joke. Working through the heel. You'll see that I've repeated strokes constantly. I'm just going through and working on tissue. What I cannot tell you is what is always going to work with everyone in every situation because they're different. What you have to do is be a really good jazz musician of the body. That means you learn your scales and you start to improvise. Play with the receiver. Work with their curves, their body, their tissue. Become soft and supple. And always remember to breathe traction or out. We've done really great work on both feet. I'm gonna work through the soles again. Up into the calves gently. Tractioning and lengthening. And then slowly to say goodbye, I'm going to hook over the bottoms of the feet and slide off. Thank you so much, Missy.